I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. I thought Raw tonight was complete shit. And here's the thing. This was the first Raw of 2018. We have a pay-per-view coming up in a couple of weeks. The Royal Rumble. You know, that pay-per-view that begins the road to WrestleMania. And also, before the Rumble, we have the Raw 25th Anniversary Show at the Manhattan Center and at Barclays Center coming up in a couple of weeks. And you would think tonight, okay, WWE would get you to be invested in both shows with tonight's episode. To get you excited, to get you to look forward to both events. But what does Raw, what does WWE do tonight with Monday Night Raw? They make it seem like we're still stuck in 2017 or 2016 with these shitty, shitty Raws. What up, y'all? It's me. It's Steve. Back at it again with a new video. Thank you all for tuning in back into the channel. If you're new here, hit that sub button down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up and share this video throughout your entire social media platforms. You can follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven, where I tweet throughout Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT, and pay-per-views as well. If you have not checked out yet my TNA fanboy parody video, part two that I did a couple days ago, it was a response to an angry email that the Psalm Monster from the Psalm Monster Sounds Off got. And I decided to be creative with the video, what have you. Hope y'all enjoyed it. If you haven't, if you watched it, if you haven't, go all out of way and check it out when you get a chance. But this again is your WWE Monday Night Raw review recap for January first, twenty eighteen. Raw tonight was live from Miami, Florida, and I gotta say again, just a shit show, complete, complete. I mean, it has some okay moments, but still, overall, it's disappointing because we think about it. When you look at Raw, right, throughout the entire year. Right, the most important episodes, in my opinion, are, are always should be the Raw at the WrestleMania and the first Raw of the New Year. Hands down, those two should always be the most important Raws. Okay, and what I said earlier, there being a pay per view coming up, there's a big Raw anniversary show coming up as well. And instead of you know being invested, they gave you today's show on a plate. The show kicked off with Kurt Angle coming out to the ring to let everyone know that hey. John Cena is in the Royal Rumble match. That's right, part-time John is in the Royal Rumble match. Even though there was a tweet early in the day that announced that, Ro that John Cena was in the Royal Rumble match. Part-time John, that's right. And not only that, but to also remind us all that not only will there be one Rumble match, there will be two Rumble matches at the Royal Rumble, men and women. And not only that, but the women's Rumble match will be just like the men's Rumble match. 30 women, that's right, 30 women in the Royal Rumble match for the women. Now, people are wondering, you know, who will be in this match. You know, there'll be women from SmackDown Live, women from Raw, maybe some surprise entrances from NXT, maybe some, you know, former legends, Hall of Famers, or maybe just maybe, in my opinion, some participants that were in the Mae Young Classic. It could work. Who knows, right? But if... Our WWE, I would go with that route. Bring in some surprise entrances. Bring in women that were in the Mayhem Classic. Or hell, if you you know what? Bring in some women from the independent scene right now. Why the hell not? But that's the thing right now. We're getting a 30 women rumble match. So I'm assuming it'll be, again, another hour match. Who the hell knows? But then after this, right, the bar comes out. And they're demanding a rematch against Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. Because what happened last week when Rollins and Jordan won the tag titles from the bar and they're tired of the favoritism because apparently after, you know, rolling off the air last week, there was a clip where Kurt Angle goes out to the ring to celebrate with his son Jason Jordan because his son won the tag title. Right? So if you're a father out there, of course you'd be fucking happy. Hey, your son won a championship. Your son, your son accomplished something, right? And then out comes Jason Jordan walking out to the ring, tries to go after the bar, and Cesaro, and then Kurt Angle makes an impromptu match because apparently, per Kurt Angle, things get settled in the ring every single time. That's the slogan. Whenever there's a problem, we settle it in the ring. Can we please just make a shirt 
for Kurt Angle when there's a problem we settle it in the ring. Do you imagine him telling that to his kids in real life? When there's a problem at home, we settle it in the ring. Just saying. Okay? So we get Cesaro and Jason Jordan. Out comes Rollins to pretty much, you know, give advice to Jason Jordan. Because apparently, listen, you know, anything that Jordan does here on out, it affects Rollins because they're both tag team champions. And Rollins is looking out for the titles. And he said, I hope that you lose. I think you will lose. (laughs) And we have the match. And I'll be honest, this match was bland. N- there's nothing that they could have done to get me invested in this match. No one cared. No one in Miami cared. People were chanting boring. People were chanting end this match. People were chanting daddy's daddy's boy to Jason Jordan. And again, it just one of those things where, listen, both guys are talented in the ring. They're talented. No one's denying that. But it is one of those things where no matter what they did, no one cared. It was all said and done. Jason Jordan got a win over Cesaro. Even though Cesaro at the time in this match was working on Jordan's knee. But there you go with that. And who's to say maybe at the 25th anniversary show, there's a rematch. Who the hell knows? <laughs> or if not, all four men will be put in that Rumble match. I don't fucking know. But there was that. And then after they thought that was bland, we get to another, we get, we get to another match that's even more blander than the first one. <laughs> Bray Wyatt. In Apollo Crews. That's right. Apollo Crews versus Bray Wyatt. And Apollo Crews comes out with Titus O'Neil and Dana Brooke. The Titus Worldwide Enterprise. Whatever the fuck they're called now. In this match went way, way too long. For no reason at all. Okay? It's Apollo Crews, okay? I'm sorry, but Apollo Crews is just dead. Lost. Okay? Nothing they can do to bring him back. I'm sorry. Okay? Keep it 100 with that. And Bray Wyatt, in this match, again, it just felt like forever. Um, Dana Brooke got up on the apron to no avail because at the end of the day, when it was all said and done, Bray got the win with Sister Abigail, and there you go with that. Matt Hardy popped up on the screen, broken mad or woken mad, and continue on his blabber back and forth. And there you go with that. I'll be honest with you. Listen, bro- woken mad, I'll be honest right now, I'm not digging it. I'm just not. <laughs> um, that's just my take on it overall. I know there's some that are digging. There's some that are cool with it. There's some that are saying delete, delete, what have you. But to me right now, eh. Like, honestly, if he ever got that gimmick from TNA in WWE, I would not have lost sleep on it. I would not lost sleep on it. it to me, it would have been whatever. But that's just my take on that, okay? Um, after this, we get Asuka versus Alexa Bliss, which apparently before the match took place, you see Alexa Bliss trying to confront Nia Jax because Nia Jax was leaving the arena. She was leaving to go check up on her boo, her boyfriend, Enzo Amore. Right? And she had and she had with her a container, right? Of soup. Chicken noodle soup. That's right, with no soda on the side. And Alexa's like, listen, you gotta make a choice. Either me or Enzo. And you would think Nia would say, no, I'm gonna go with Enzo because like, she cares for Enzo more, what have you. No, she says, listen. My soup is getting cold, so I gotta go. Listen, I love chicken noodle soup, just like the next person. But come on, WWE. You mean to tell me you could have come up with something even better than the soup is getting cold? Which I'm pretty sure would have gotten cold, but still. You know, next time, chicken noodle soup with the soda on the side. I'm just saying, keep it 100, alright? The match itself was long, went way too long. At one moment, I thought, okay, this is probably the time where Asuka takes the L. But no, it didn't go that way. Asuka finally got the win with a submission. With the, she locked in the armbar, the, you know, the armbar, what have you, right? And it hit me. Wait a minute. Asuka just beat the Raw Women's Champion. But at the same time, Asuka is in the Women's Rumble match. She announced last week, hey, she's in the Raw Women's, she's in the Women's Rumble match. No one's ready for Asuka. <laughs> So, where do you go from here? I mean, do you do a match? Maybe, just maybe, you do a match at the 25th anniversary show of Raw. And whoever loses that match gets put in the Rumble match. Maybe, just maybe, Asuka wins the belt in Brooklyn or New York, what have you, in a couple of weeks at the Raw 25th anniversary show. Maybe, just maybe. Who the hell knows, right? We then had Braun Strowman versus Rhino, a short match, uh... Heath Slater got up on the apron. 
multiple times, trying to cheer up on Rhino. And Braun grabbed the mic and said, hey, you got two choices. Either you get in the ring, you throw hands, or I'll just take you out. And he got in the ring. It was like an improv to handicap match to no avail. Braun got the win. And then after all this, Braun Strowman decided to do multiple power slams on both men. The crowd was going crazy. The crowd was chanting, one more time, one more time, one more time. And here's the thing about it, too, okay? I get what they're doing. It's momentum. They're giving both Kane and Braun momentum as they go into the Rumble match. Because the last thing you want to do is give these guys these long matches. And let's be real about it. Both men here, they don't really thrive in long matches. Okay? Look back at No Mercy, where Braun went up with Brock in that championship match. And the match was like nine minutes. And Braun got gassed out. It really wasn't his best showing. You put Braun in these short matches, he's going to fucking thrive and go, you know, reach for the stars, if you will. Okay? Same thing with Kane. But after all this, right, you see Braun walking backstage and Kane making a proposal to work together with Braun Strowman to take out Brock Lesnar. Which then Braun just ignored and walked away. Kind of crazy. Why would the devil's favorite demon want to negotiate something, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know. This felt stupid to me. We then had the Intercontinental Championship match, Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe, where if Roman got disqualified, any way, shape, or form, or countered out, what have you, then he would lose the Intercontinental Championship. But prior to the match, right, prior to this match, there was a Samoa Joe interview with Renee Young, where Samoa Joe went in on Dean Ambrose, made fun of Dean Ambrose, in front of Renee Young. And Renee had this look on her face like, what the fuck, dude? Um, and then there was a segment backstage where Rollins and Roman were back in the locker room area talking about, you know, hey, listen, Roman, whatever you do, don't get disqualified. Don't get your don't let the emotion get the best of you and shit like that, right? And then from out of nowhere, Jason Jordan walks in and says, hey, listen, I speak for both, both me and Seth that, listen, if you need anything, we're there for you. If the bar comes out there... We'll take the bar out. You can believe that. I just walked away. And both Roman and Seth were like, what the fuck? <laughs> Felt random as hell, but yeah, that was just that. And again, just whatever. The match itself, I'll say this. Roman and Joe, honestly, had a very, very good match. Back and forth, good spots, what have you, all the hell you want, right? There was a moment in the match where Joe pushes Roman and Roman hits the referee. Whatever, right? And the ref about to, you know, ring the bell for disqualification, which meant Roman lost his belt. But all said and done, the big dog got the win and still Intercontinental Champion. And people were, you know, a little upset because Roman got the win. But at the end of the day, listen, Roman got a reaction. People were cheering for Roman. So there you go with that. I mean, listen, uh, who to say they'll have a match at the Rumble? They could do that. Honestly, I would rather see them have a rematch at the Royal Rumble where there's a big probability that Samoa Joe will re, you know, will capture the Intercontinental title. Okay? That's just my honest opinion. But we'll see where they go with that. Um, we had a random tag team match for no fucking reason whatsoever between Cedric Alexander and Goldust versus Drew Gulak and Arya Davari. This all started because apparently Enzo Moore was hospitalized. Hopefully he's doing well. Maybe a speed of recovery. And so they're all in the ring, right? So Drew Gulak and Arya Devar in the ring. Uh, Gulak reads a letter, right? He reads a letter that Enzo wrote, like a statement, whatever. And out comes, it, yeah, the out comes um, Cedric Alexander to pretty much confront, you know, the Zoe train, what have you. And Gulak and, and Arya Devar like, hey, you have no friend that's going to help you out and shit like that. And then out came Goldust. And they had an impromptu tag team match. I didn't care. Gold did like a moonsault, but it was whatever. Um, listen, you know it's bad when you got to bring in these old fossils to have people care about the Cruiserweight division. And it's sad. It's totally sad. But honest to God, again, they can bring out there, for all I care, they can bring out D. Malenko at this point in Juncture, and no one's going to care. Let's just keep it 100 with that, okay? They can bring out Richie, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and no one's going to care. Hell, they can bring out Sid, and no one's going to care. Just saying, 
Okay? Just fucking saying. Um, after this, we get a, a six-person tag. We have Bo Dallas, Elias, and um, Michael McGillicuddy, right? Th those three guys versus the club, the Balor Club. We had Finn Balor. We had Lou Gallows and Carl Anderson. So apparently all this started because backstage, Finn Balor introduced to Kurt Angle his two partners. And the crowd, go cra the crowd went crazy, what have you. People are chanting too sweet. All the, you, can't get, you can't get the idea, right? It's kind of crazy too, you think about it. They decided to have Balor team up with Anderson and Gallows just days before Wrestle Kingdom 12. So you, like, you know WWE, like, they know that, yeah, you know, New Japan's having this big show in a couple of days. So let's capitalize on this shit. Let's have the three former New Japan guys team up here. I'm just kidding, but you can't get the idea, okay? This match, obviously, you know, you all know who won, right? The Battle Club got the win with the coup de grace. Listen, end of the day, the way I look at this right now, it's something for Balor and Anderson and Gallus to do. I guess the whole notion that I get from this is simple. Hey, look, Dean's out with an injury, so we need a faction to, you know, pretty much replace the shield. Not like replace it forever, but just to fill that void for now, right? And also, when you think about it, too, Finn Balor announced that he's entering the Rumble as well. And who to say? Listen, we'll see that Finn Balor heel turn. I doubt it. We might see a, a, a face club uh, or, you know, a baby face club, if you will. But still, other than that, we'll see where this goes. But it was kind of cool to see that, you know, for this week. But we'll see, again, where this goes. Um, after this, we get... Uh, the whole big, the whole big Paul Heyman appearance with Brock Lesnar, where they're mad because apparently it's always Brock against you know challengers and not a challenger. When you think about it, for the past, you know, these past challenges that Brock's had it's always been you know in multiple men matches, not one on one. Even though yeah, there is Samoa Joe. And Braun that he faced in just single matches as well, even AJ Styles, but it wasn't for the championship of that last one. But other than that, Paul Heyman pretty much said, "Hey, listen, no matter what happens, right, no matter what goes down, Brock always finds a way." Because think about this, right? Kane can pin Braun Strowman, and Brock lose the championship. Braun can pin Kane and lose the championship. That Brock that is right. But if if you think that Kane or Braun is pinning Brock, that's not happening. Or hell, they can have the thirty guys from the Rumble match one by one or collect or collectively and Brock will beat them all and out comes Kane and there's just mayhem what have you Kane choke slams Brock Lesnar Kane goes to leave the ring and then Brock just sits right back up like the Undertaker like Kane what a spit in the face to Kane right he rises up just like his brother and shit right and there's a brawl, what have you. And then you have the entire locker room, I guess, try to come out the half ass to save. This is a shitty way to end the show. Okay, that's how they ended Raw tonight. In a shitty, shitty way. Um, again, they did nothing to get me invested with, you know, the beginning of the year to make me look forward to watching the Royal Rumble or watching the Raw 25th anniversary show. And people are going to say, oh, you know, it's the beginning of the year. Give it time. But listen, the road to WrestleMania is almost here. So they got to do something. They really got to do something to get people invested right now. Especially with when New Japan has Wrestle Kingdom in a couple of days. And you know for a fact that a lot of people, a lot of the wrestling fans out there, right, are going to be really invested in, in Wrestle Kingdom because of Jericho and Omega. WWE got to pull a rabbit out of the hat. I'm just saying, with tomorrow on SmackDown Live. But we'll see where this goes. Guys, this pretty much wraps up my Raw review. Give your thoughts down below in the comment threads. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up. And share it through our entire social media. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, it's me, it's Steve. And it's wrestling and whatever. Brah.